Hey everyone, Sam here, thanks for joining me. I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are in the world. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to paint a landscape in acrylics. And this landscape features a mountain and a river. So without further ado, we'll get straight into the video and I hope you enjoy it. I'm painting on a 10 inch by 12 inch linen panel and it's been primed with a clear gesso. I actually like the look of this linen panel without any white gesso over it and I thought this would be nice to just paint on as it is. So I'm sketching out the composition using burnt sienna mixed with a little water. For those of you that are new to watching my channel, I mainly paint landscapes in oils and it's actually been years since I've painted in acrylics. But I've had lots of requests to do some landscape paintings in acrylics. And recently I thought, you know what, why not? It's been quite a while since I've painted with acrylics. Let's see what I can do with them now that I've got a few more years brush mileage under my belt. Now back in the day, a very long time ago, I used to paint with acrylics before I tried oils. And then when I switched over to oils, I didn't really do any more acrylic painting, aside from the video I made for this YouTube channel a few years ago. But I'm gonna be doing a few paintings in acrylic. I wanna see what I can do with this medium now. So with this particular landscape that I'm painting, it's a mountain scene, and I've actually painted it before in oils, and I wanted to just get straight into it when my acrylic paints arrived, and I already had this sketched out, the composition, so I used the old sketch, and I just wanted to get straight into it and see what these acrylic paints can do. So the first thing I'm doing here is I'm painting the dark values and shadows first. Now value refers to how light or dark your subject is, and the general rule of thumb is you'll find your darkest darks and your lightest lights in the foreground. But as landforms recede, darks are not as dark and lights are not as light. And that's because the value scale narrows. So the value range is much narrower the further you go into the distance. So this mountain here is gonna look lighter in the shadow areas compared to these rocks and the edge of the riverbank that's in the foreground. Now, given that acrylic paints dry pretty quickly, I've decided to paint quickly and go for some more expressive brushwork rather than lots of intricate detail. But as you'll see, when I completed this painting, it still looked relatively detailed, even though the brushwork was a little bit looser than what I'd use for oil painting. To paint these shadow areas in the mountains, I've used varying combinations of ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, a little alizarin crimson, and titanium white. Now for the sky, I've used a mix of ultramarine blue with a little phthalo green and titanium white. And now that I'm painting the clouds here, they're backlit by the sun and quite thin. So I'm using a light mix of titanium white with some burnt sienna and a little bit of the mountain shadow mix I already made mixed into it. Now one of the key things about painting with acrylics, aside from the fact that they dry quickly, is that they often dry darker than when you initially apply the paint. So this is something I'm factoring in when I'm applying my brush marks here. And as it's been a while since I've painted it in acrylics, I'm gonna have to see what happens and just, basically I'm just getting some paint down and then I actually made the value readjustments later on in the painting. So here I'm painting the areas of the mountain that's in light and I'm using the same colors that I've used in the shadow areas, but where the titanium white and burnt sienna are the main dominant colors within the mix. So the value is much, much lighter. And then I'm painting a bit of the snow on the top, which was the cloud mix, but then with some more shadow mix added in so that it's not completely white. I'm gonna be saving my lightest values until the end of the painting. And here I'm beginning to paint some of the distant vegetation at the base of this mountain. Now it's really important that the green that I mix here isn't saturated, otherwise it's gonna come forward in the painting. So we've gotta use some really desaturated color. Now for this, I used a mix of yellow ochre with a little ultramarine blue, some titanium white, and a small amount of phthalo green. And even I could add in a little bit of burnt sienna as well, just to knock out some more of the saturation. And then as I work forward, in the painting to the midground, I then increase the saturation of the green by mixing in some cadmium yellow. There's also a little burnt sienna or even some alizarin crimson in there as well. I'm trying to get a variety of colors in there. So for these trees that are in the midground, I've made the value darker because trees are some of the darkest values to be found in the landscape. 
Now by the time I was moving on to the grass in the foreground here, I was using my most saturated greens. And as you can see at the moment, the greens look a little pungent, but I was able to knock those back quite quickly. So here what I was doing was mainly using cadmium yellow and ultramarine blue and yellow ochre in the mix. Also some phthalo green and then adjusting it with either some alizarin crimson, some titanium white and some cadmium red light. I haven't mixed my colours together thoroughly either. I've been using broken colour so some of those individual hues come through. Now moving on to the river and it's mostly reflecting the sky so I've used a mix of ultramarine blue, a little yellow ochre, some phthalo green and titanium white. And then for the areas of the water that's reflecting the vegetation, I've used a mix of yellow ochre with burnt sienna, ultramarine blue and titanium white. Now as it happens the value was too light so I made some adjustments to it later on in the painting which you'll see. Here I'm painting some of these bushes in the foreground and the foliage is much darker than the grass and I've used the same colours that I've used in the grass but made the value darker so there's more ultramarine blue in the mix. Now at this point in the painting I'd gotten most of the canvas covered, the paint had already dried and it was easy to see where the value readjustments needed to be made and one of the first areas was the sky. The sky had definitely dried darker than when I initially applied the paint so I've used the same colours, there's just a lot more titanium white in the mix. I've made that sky much lighter and I'm using downwards vertical brush marks to create some texture in the sky as well as some of that broken colour. And then of course the mountain needed to be made a little lighter as well. It's difficult to start with to factor in how dark it would dry, especially as it's been a while since I've painted with acrylic paint. And now that I'm applying some fresh layers, you can see that it's much lighter in value. The painting is at a bit of an ugly stage at the moment, but this is where you just need to press on and the more layers and detail you start adding, the more it's going to come together. Now for the most part, I've been using a short synthetic flat brush here. They're not the usual brand of Rosemary & Co that I used, although I had ordered some Rosemary & Co brushes and I was waiting for them to arrive in the post but I was impatient so I ordered just a couple of brushes from an art store in New Zealand where I live. At the time of editing this video, my Rosemary & Co brushes had arrived so I can't wait to try those out and you'll see that in the next acrylic painting that I'll do. I'll make a video about it for sure. So back to the mountain and I'm now applying some lighter value colour than the previous layer. Now one of the things I do with my paintings in general is I keep them tonally darker to begin with and then I gradually add lighter layers as I work through the painting and then I save my lightest values until the very end and I found that this gives the most depth in a painting. If I was to just start with all my lightest values to begin with then I wouldn't have anywhere to go and the painting could look rather flat. Now the next thing I'm doing here is working on the various elements within the midground. I've restated some of these dark values using the same colour combinations I used to begin with, mostly a mix of ultramarine blue with burnt sienna, a little titanium white and a little alizarin crimson. And then I'm restating some of these trees that are in the distance as well, using mostly a mix of yellow ochre, ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow as the main colours and then adjusting the mix with alizarin crimson, even a little phthalo green and titanium white. Now the reason I mix alizarin crimson into quite a few of these green mixes is because the red in this colour is opposite to green on the colour wheel so it's going to help to desaturate the green. And again I've been making sure to not mix the colours together thoroughly so some of those individual colours come through on my brush so mixing broken colour on the palette. Now as I work towards the foreground some of these trees and the banks of the river need some dark value colour added to them. And I've decided to make a more kind of organic dark colour that's got a green undertone by mixing yellow ochre with ultramarine blue. There's even in some of these mixes a little alizarin crimson and phthalo green in there, mainly in the trees. And then the next thing I do is I drag those colours down as well. I've also made them a little bit lighter in value, but to create the reflections in the water. At least the beginnings of the reflections. I then use that same shadow green mix, but this time with a little titanium white added, just to add some more shadows in those mid-ground trees and to communicate some of the ridges on the sides of these mountains. 
Now the next thing to address was the water in the foreground. Those initial colours that I put down were way too light in value so I needed some darker value colour. And I've used a mix of burnt sienna, ultramarine blue and yellow ochre. This colour combination is a good go-to combination. If you want to create some organic kind of earthy colours to paint in water reflections, especially if it's reflecting vegetation. Now the next thing to do was to add some more detail to the water and the part of the water that's reflecting the sky. And now that I've got those dark areas around the riverbanks, it's really gonna emphasize this, especially when I add these sparkles to the water at the end of the painting. So I'm still using the same colors that I used earlier on and this is a mix of ultramarine blue with a little yellow ochre, phthalo green and titanium white. Now as each zone in the painting dried, I was then able to go back to them and add more areas of details. Like here at the side of the river where I was painting some now darker value colour as the reflection of the side of the river bank using vertical downwards brush marks. And then the next thing to do was to paint some reflected light into this giant boulder here that's on the right side of the painting. And I've used the same colours here as I have for most of the other shadow areas within this scene. So varying combinations of ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, alizarin crimson and a little titanium white. Now these three colours are a really good useful colour combination because you can create so many different values and tones with them that you would find in the landscape and it's a good default colour mix to go to. You can use them for painting cloud shadows, rocks, mountain shadows, trees, all sorts so it's just a really useful colour to use. Now the next thing to do here was to add more detail to the side of the river bank on the right side of the painting here. And I've mixed up a load of greens again, the same as I was using before, but again I'm using that broken colour to get a variety of different tones within there. And then following this it was time to add some more detail to the trees that are in the foreground and in the midground there. So it's the same greens that I've used for the grass but the value is much darker so there's more ultramarine blue in the mix. And as well as that, some more cadmium yellow, even a little phthalo green. And I've added in some cadmium red light as well. So that really helps to knock back the saturation of that green. It also gives the green a few subtle olive tones as well. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm adding some lighter layers of paint to some of these trees that are in the midground. So that's helping to build out the form of them and make them look more rounded. I'm still keeping in mind that the colours generally dry a bit darker than when you first apply them so when I'm initially laying down that wet paint it looks lighter in value but I'm accounting for the fact that it's going to dry darker. Nonetheless I wanted to create more texture within the midground and make it look like a rugged mountain landscape. Even my brushes now are starting to get smaller I'm using smaller short flat brushes here. Now again, as these various zones within the painting begin to dry, I can then add more detail, such as more shadows being added to the sides of the riverbank and the grass in the foreground as well. That's helping to create more depth within the painting. In general, I've found that landscapes look more realistic and are easier to paint, especially if you're a beginner, if there's a decent amount of shadows within the landscape, because you've got the contrast between those darker shadows and the areas in light. Now that's not to say that you couldn't paint something where the sun's shining directly on it but you have to make sure that you really nail your colours and values so you get that recession of landforms. But in general I feel that landscape paintings that have a lot more shadows in them have a lot more depth as well. Now at this point in the painting it was well underway and I was starting to think about getting it finished. There's still lots of work to be done on various elements within this landscape, especially the mountain in the background. So I added some lighter layers of paint here to communicate the reflected light that's in this steep rocky face of this mountain. I'm still using broad gestural brush marks here for that nice painterly effect. Now as I carry on painting the mountain here, I'd like to tell you about the sponsor of this video, School. School is an easy to use platform where you can create your own courses, host your own community and schedule events all in the one platform. With School you can earn a living bringing people together to collaborate on shared goals and interests. 
Create coaching programs, memberships or online courses. Also create your own community and schedule live events, Zoom calls and live streams. All on the one platform. Now I've been using School myself. I've actually created an online art school. It's so easy to use. I've created many full painting tutorials, which I've categorised under different genres, for example, painting landscapes or seascapes, painting mountains, and they're all here under the classroom section, so this is a place where you can create and host your own courses. I also host live Q&A Zoom meetings as well, and shortly about to be doing some painting live streams, and this can be found in the calendar section. And one of the best things about school is the community section. This is where all your subscribers can all talk to each other. And on my online art school, we talk about art related things. We share our artwork on there and we give each other support. It's a really awesome community. You can set your own prices for your community. And one of the best things about school is it's so easy to use, not only from a user perspective, but also as a content creator. Now, if you'd like to create your own community on school, then school is offering a 14 day free trial. Just use my link in the description box below. And if you'd like to join my online art school and learn more about painting landscapes, where I've got loads of full length painting tutorial videos, live Zoom meetings, lesson notes, reference photos, a helpful and vibrant community and everything you need to take your painting skills to the next level, then come and join me at my online art school. I've put the link in the description box below. So back to the painting and I did some more work on the sky and clouds and now I'm really getting into more detail here and building up lighter layers of paint on the trees in the midground and the vegetation and trees that are in the foreground. So essentially I'm still using similar colour mixes that I've been using all along but just varying up the colours to get different tones and values. Now one of the really important things that's going to make your painting read well is to pay attention to the colour harmony in the painting. So this is where the colours look nice, they look organic and natural and they just look pleasing to the viewer. And one of the ways we can do this is by trying to use common colours throughout the painting, so using similar colour mixes. So for example, one of the most common colours I've been using is ultramarine blue. I've been using that in the shadows in the background mountains, in the shadows in the rocks, the trees, the vegetation in general. And then I've combined this with other colours such as burnt sienna, alizarin crimson, yellow ochre and cadmium yellow for example. The sky I've used ultramarine blue and thalo green and I've also used those colours in the water. Those colours have also been used in the vegetation, so it ties all those zones together. So we've got a nice cohesive painting with pleasing colours and something that looks good to the viewer. Now one of the last things to do to this painting was where I've saved my lightest values to the end and this is here where I'm painting the sparkles in the water, so making it look like a nice bright sunny afternoon in the mountains and the water is shimmering in the sunlight. Now for this I just use Titanium white mixed with a little bit of yellow ochre and I'm applying the paint with a round brush here and I'm just painting little dots. I'm frequently reloading my brush as well. Now once I'd painted all these sparkles in the water, I then finished the painting by just adding some last details to various zones within the painting where I felt it was needed. For example, I painted some more highlights on some of these rocks here, which are a low chroma colour and actually quite light in value. So this was the white paint that I'd used to paint the sparkles in the water, but then I mixed in a little bit of burnt sienna and some yellow ochre. I added a little more texture into the background mountain and some slightly lighter layers of paint than the previous layer, just to communicate more of that reflected light using broad sweeping gestural brush marks to give the painting a nice aliveness and a painterly look. Then went back over the areas that are in light. This is generally a low chroma colour as well, much like the rocks in the foreground. And then lastly I painted some reflected light in this boulder that's in the very foreground, using the same colours that I've used in the background mountain but where the burnt sienna is the prominent colour within the mix. And then that was it, the painting was finished. 
I have to say I really enjoyed painting this artwork in acrylics and I'll definitely be doing some more acrylic paintings for this channel. Be sure to check out the blog post that accompanies this video. I've put the link in the description box below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.